In this video I'll be showing you how to bake your own bread with the use of a stand mixer. If you'd like to see more cooking and baking then start right now by hitting the subscribe button and turning on the notifications bell. Begin by placing the flour, butter, sugar and salt into your mixing bowl and then bloom your yeast with the water. As you'll see in this recipe I've used fresh yeast. It is readily available but if you do have difficulty getting hold of it then you can substitute for dried yeast. I will leave an amendment in the description box below. Place the mixing bowl with the ingredients onto the mixer and then using the dough hook on a low speed turn the mixer on to combine all the ingredients together. Don't forget if you'd like to see more cooking and baking then start right now by hitting the subscribe button and turning on the notifications bell. Once the ingredients have been combined begin to add your water to the mix. Give the yeast one final stir for introducing and then pour roughly 75% of the water into the mix and then gradually allow the mixer to slowly bring it into a dough. As the water is incorporated and the mixture returns to being dry, slowly add dashes of water at a time to bring it back together into the dough. Be aware you may not need all the water as factors such as the ambient temperature and the temperature of your ingredients will affect precisely how much water you will need to introduce into the dough. Once your dough has formed into a ball and all the ingredients have come away from the side of the bowl, allow the mixer to knead the dough for roughly 6-8 to eight minutes. Once the kneading process has been complete, check on the dough, it should feel slightly tacky to the touch but should not stick to your fingers and when squeezed it should have quite a rubbery, spongy feel to it. Cling film the bowl loosely, you want to leave the cling film loose so that you give the opportunity for air to escape and then let your dough prove until it has doubled in size. Once the dough is doubled in size, give it a quick touch on top, it should still feel springy and then tap it hard to let the air out. Reattach your dough hook to your mixer, reinsert the mixer into the dough and then knead for another 5 minutes. One of the great things of making your own bread is you're able to mould it to any shape you desire. Here I'm going to do one plaited miniature loaf, three regular loaf tins and one full size loaf tin. Don't forget to see more cooking and baking then hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell. You will see that the plats I've made aren't the perfect shape for a plat but the way the bread rises and proves up in the tin is not overly important to have the perfect plat as it would be for something else in cooking.
finally with the remaining dough I'm going to make some dinner rolls obviously the size of any bread you make is entirely up to personal preference but just bear in mind that when you do prove and bake whatever size you make it at this stage it will be double in size by the time it's baked Allow your bread to prove roughly one third in size and then if you desire and wish to put some extra garnish on it you can egg wash it. Here I've added poppy seeds, you could add sesame seeds or if you didn't want to do that you could just sprinkle some flour over the top. When proving bread on the second prove if you make scores in the top of the bread it helps the dough to relax as it proves and should give you a slightly better prove. Allow your bread to continue proving until it has doubled in size and when it has doubled in size place it into a preheated oven on 160 degrees until it is golden brown all over. Cooking time again will vary depending on what size of bread you've actually selected to bake but you will know it's baked when you can remove it, take it out of the tin and do the tap test for a hollow sound. If you would like to make your own bread but you don't have access to a mixer then there is another recipe on this channel showing you how to make your own bread entirely by hand. Don't forget if you haven't done so already hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to never miss a future upload. The final stage once your bread has been baked and does have a hollow sound is to check the inside of the bread. Squeezing the outside you should have a nice springy feel and then when sliced down the middle you should have nice uniform bubbles, a lot more uniform than if you'd made it by hand and it should have a very springy feel to it. I hope you found this video on making your own bread informative and helpful. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. And to never miss a future upload, be sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and why not check out one of the videos on screen now.